What are your first thoughts here on this tragedy? Yeah, good to see you again, Christian. Thank you for having me. Um, you know, first off, condolences to the family and the loved ones of those who sadly died in their quest to explore. Uh, remember the Challenger space shuttle tragedy. Lots of good engineering practices came from it. The Titan tragedy is a similar type of moment for ocean exploration, in my opinion. And just as those of the Challenger wanted to explore the heavens, these explorers wanted to learn more about the treasures in our oceans. That should be celebrated. We need brave people like Stockton, Hamish, Paul Henry, Shazada, and Suleiman to keep exploring. Unfortunately, there are very real risks, however, in addition to the rewards when it comes to this exploration. And it's a real sad day that this one ended in tragedy. But like with the Challenger tragedy, we must learn and move forward. Lastly, I truly feel that the search and rescue team did all that they could do under the circumstances and that they will become even better as we all will from now on. Yeah, I think a, a big focus on safety and regulations in the days following, but let's focus on this catastrophic implosion. How exactly does that happen? What conditions must be met to have a failure like this? Yeah, so uh, my little sister Casey told me I was too technical last night, so I'm going to try to keep it simpler. But you know, simply put, water weighs a lot more than air, right? Uh, for example, 33 feet of water depth overhead is equal to the entire weight of the air atmosphere above each of us every day. At 12,500 feet, that pressure is almost 400 times greater across the boundary of, say, the submersible. It must not be allowed to force its way inside, and unfortunately, even the slightest defect in that boundary can allow a pathway for that pressure to rush in. When it does, it does so in the blink of an eye. You know, thankfully, a human wouldn't even feel it. It would happen so fast, so no amount of suffering would occur. Uh, again, the deconstruction of this incident will reveal exactly what failed, but we just need time. Yeah, there's a lot we, we don't know, but does this indicate to you, given your expertise, that there was some deficiency in the hull that, uh, that possibly allowed this implosion to happen? Yes, absolutely, I would say that. Yeah. This um, search and rescue mission now moves into the recovery phase. What factors may complicate what happens next, especially when it comes to the effort to retrieve these people who were lost? Yeah, uh, when a catastrophic implosion like this occurs, it's literally like a bomb goes off. You know, pieces are scattered everywhere. Salvage efforts to recover these pieces are up against the danger of being down there in the first place, the darkness of the ocean at those depths, and its ability to move, uh, the ocean that is, sand and debris, which could bury something under the sea floor. Time is certainly of the essence here as well. And yes, some pieces uh, such as human bodies may float uh, to be found later on if they're not discovered near the wreckage. Yeah, one of the uh, anecdotes I saw from um, some reporting is that folks who were actually looking for um, the crew and this vessel, um, they're, they're at a depth where it is, it is pitch black, you know, and they're, that's why, you know, I was asking what sort of factors are they kind of contending with here? Looking ahead to safety regulation, do you see changes happening in the field of deep sea dives uh, as far as safety and regulations go, including in international waters? You know, I, I guess revolve, excuse me, regarding the future, uh, one of the things that struck out most to me about this rescue mission was how long it took. You know, the Coast Guard and other agencies did a commendable job jumping in to help but it highlights the need to be able to react quicker to these kinds of crises events under sea. Moreover, to minimize the impacts of long wait times after they occur. For example, we could be able to find a downed submarine, plane, or any object faster if we implemented underwater plasmonic beacons onto these vehicles. Proper communications providing the right information at the right time is very powerful. Thankfully, uh, relevant science, such as plasmonics, is evolving, but it needs to be advanced quicker to save lives, deter, deter wars, et cetera. Think about uh, some of the incidents in the past. It was all a timing based. So hopefully the U.S. government and private industries will invest early and often in bringing these technologies to prevent mishaps in the future. Yeah. Mark Berry, thanks again for your insight on this. Thank you so much, Christopher.